Hey guys, I've been planning to film this video forever and I'm finally gonna do this um, six months after I took my final LSAT test, which I got a 173. So today I will jump into talking about how I got my score and how I studied and some tips for you guys to study for the LSAT in the coming year. So the first thing that you need to do before you start studying for the outside is to know your goal score that you want to get at the end of your journey. So this target score should be based also on the dream schools that you want to go into. So my advice for you guys would be to search up the your target schools and see the medium LSAT and medium GPA scores of students that are accepted at the target school. And then based on that score, that should give you an idea of what you should be aiming for for your LSAT studies. The second thing that you should do is that you should take a full length practice test. And it's actually really hard when you start studying for the LSAT to actually take this test. You have to sit down, spend a couple hours, and just do it. Because it's so important to know where you are at right now to give yourself a baseline score and know the difference between your current score and your target score so it serves as somewhat of a motivation to know how far you need to go and how much you need to study. And the reason why it's so hard for so many people to actually take this diagnostic test, me included, is because you're so scared that this score will just determine how well you'll do after you study. But honestly, it doesn't have that much of a bearing. I started off with a pretty low score as well. I think I was at, at, at like a 150 something and I ended up still with a 173. So there isn't that much bearing on your first score and your last one. It's just to give yourself an idea of where you stand. And the sooner that you take this test, the sooner you kick off your studies. Third tip is that you should have a organizational system that works for you. So for some people, it could mean an Excel spreadsheet where you kind of like put on when you take your practice test, what were your conditions while taking the test, and what questions you're getting wrong. So it's just some ideas of things that you should be tracking. And for other people who would like to maybe or more hands-on, a bullet journal might be helpful. And for me, I kept a calendar where I highlighted the test dates, um, where I was gonna take my practice test. So I planned those out in advance. And then I also kind of um, journaled down which days I did how many like review sets. So it wasn't full practice test, but just review questions. Having a plan like that is helpful because one, it helps you plan for the future, but also second, it also helps you see how much progress you have made so far and what you still need to work on. Okay, so now that you've done all those three steps, you're ready to actually start studying for the LSAT. So for me, looking back at how I study for LSAT, I would divide my time into two phases of LSAT studying. So during the first phase, the main goal of this phase is just to get to know the question types and get to know the sort of skills that are necessary that is required for these question types. And for the second phase, your main focus should be to manage time and to deal with performance anxiety, to deal with different emotions. Uh, so that's how I categorize my time. So for me, the first phase lasted around two to three months. And the main goal, as I said, is to get to know the concepts. And for different people, this could mean different things. But for me, I took a blueprint course, which was a couple months long and it helped me cover the basic concepts and helped me get the skills necessary. And I also found it really helpful to get some practice books and the ones that are most recommended to me and which I found really helpful is called the LSAT Trainer. It's one of them. And the other one was called Power Score. So Power Score, I bought this set of three books, but I ended up only using the logic game section. And Elsa Trainer, I kind of skimmed through the whole book. So the difference between these two these two companies is that Power Score, personally, I think that they do a really great job at 
telling you specific skills and tactics that you should employ to tackle different sorts of questions. So it's very question specific. They're really good at breaking things down. So this approach I think works really well with logic games because there's only that many variations that the test makers can throw at you. So knowing what those variations are and knowing how to diagram for these different situations will be really helpful. So that, that book I really recommend at least getting the the logic games one and for LSAT trainer I use it it's more it's more like big picture thinking it it teaches you like a like a mindset to approach the LSAT I personally found it really helpful for the reading comprehension section and also the logic reasoning section because it tells you like the kind of mode you should approach it in for instance, it tells you not to focus on both the big picture and the details when you're doing reading comprehension, focus on one at a time. It, it, it brings you into the right mind space. So that's why I found this book really helpful. And I did take an LSAT course, so I did take Blueprint. And from my research, it's one of the best and I did really like it. I but I also think everything that I got from there, I could have gotten from the books that I bought myself. It doesn't have to be from here. It just, I think its main purpose is just to help me kickstart the LSAT because I think I had a really hard time committing to studying for it. But yeah, so that was its main helpful part. And also I think its online interface is really nice. It has a lot of targeted practice questions for you to do. So it teaches you a concept and it makes you do all the questions that's just to reinforce this one concept. So it helps during this first phase of studying for the LSAT, this approach is highly recommended because instead of doing all sets of different questions at once, you can like learn one skill at a time and make sure that you hone it to its like best. So I find that really helpful, but you can also find targeted practice questions if you want from the books that I recommended. So it doesn't have to be from a course. So during the first phase of studying for the LSAT, I also recommend not front loading it with a bunch of practice tests because at this stage, you're not familiar with the concepts yet. So when you do, when you get all these questions thrown at you, it's not as effective to waste precious <laughs> LSAT real exams and spend it on just doing the whole thing. It's kind of, and it's kind of discouraging because you know, you, you get kind of sad if you see that your, your, your current score is so far away from your goal score. So I recommend doing like one test a week, or if you want, if you're working, maybe one test every two weeks. If your timeline is shorter, maybe you could do a little, a little bit more than that, but that's like a general rule of thumb. So now during your second phase of LSAT studying, your goal during this phase should be to learn to manage your time and most importantly, how to manage your emotions, whether that's anxieties, that's disappointment. Um, so those are the two important skills. And during this phase, you should be taking practice tests around for me, I took it every two to three days. So I would take it one day and I would spend the next day blind reviewing. So blind reviewing is really, really important. When you're just starting off, it's really difficult to do this because it's really boring. But you, it's such an important skill and it really helps improve your score. So how blind reviewing works is that you would take a full test on one day and then the next day you would go over each, every single question um, that you took the day before without time limit. And you would just think about every question thoroughly and then cross out the answers, the four answers that you, you think are absolutely wrong and the one answer that you think is absolutely right. And if you cannot reach this certainty, you have to circle this question for you to get, for you to come back and review this question. So during this process it really forces you to reevaluate your approaches and how you think about these questions so for logic reasoning i would be thinking about you know like how did i know this is a flaw like how did my brain think how did i interpret this passage and how could it think about it faster and for logic games too i would do questions over and over again just to get the fastest approach so sometimes when i'm under time limit i would just do whatever that's the most familiar to me but when you're blind reviewing what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to redo these questions and think about think about what is what am i doing that's inefficient and how can i save more time okay so now i will also talk a little bit about time management 
And I think the misconception with time management is that you need to work faster. You need to like read faster. You need to just like go, go, go. And you put stress on it. But I think usually you don't have to work faster. It's that you have to work smarter. I think this is especially evident when you're doing logic games. I think a lot of people, because they want to be faster, they skip time when they're diagramming their original graph and then they you know, they take shortcuts and they end up losing more time later on when they get to the questions. So the more efficient way to go about it is to spend more time diagramming, make sure it's good, make sure you don't miss the rule. So then the questions afterwards flows really fast. And I also find that to be helpful when I was doing reading comprehension. It's the point isn't that you're just reading things and you're skimming things fast and you're trying to go go and just do each question really fast. I think spending some time, investing some time reading things properly would really help when you tackle the question. So you will actually remember where things are and you can go back to them faster. Also, some part of time management just comes with experience. I, I think after I did like maybe 40, 40 practice tests, I realized that what works for me the best is for, for instance, for logic reasoning, I should finish the first 10 questions in the first 10 minutes. And if I hit that mark, that means I'm on track. If I do the first 10 questions too slow, then I need to speed up. So things like that, that you just kind of know as you go. And, or for instance, like for, for logic games, it takes around eight minutes, 45 seconds to do each questions. But if it's the first couple of questions, which tends to be easier, it should take around six minutes. That's just like, that's just something you need to work, work with for yourself, work out for yourself. So you know what works the best for you. Another thing that I think students should work on and they should be aware of during the second phase of study is managing their emotions. And I think this is so important because the LSAT knows how you feel during the test. They know that when you reach the last couple questions in a section, you are likely to run out of time and misread something. So sometimes they will sneak like a like a like a long worded but honestly not super hard question at the end, just so you it tricks you into into not reading it properly. So I think managing your expectations, making sure that throughout the exam you remain calm and honestly even like excited or happy which i think are emotions that kind of counter my anxieties my test anxieties that just make myself more excited about the test and i am anxious i think trying to trying to i guess manage your emotions during the test before the test is really really important to, to your performance okay so i think that's all i have to say for the study schedule and here are some more general tips there are gonna be times that LSAT feels very emotionally taxing, that you feel anxious, that you feel angry, that you feel disappointed. There are going to be days that you just feel like lying in your bed and doing nothing and never looking at the LSAT again. Trust me, there's going to be days like that um, and that's fine and I think I think one thing is that break days are totally okay. There are days that I would take a practice test and I just feel so demotivated after and seeing my scores. And then I would just feel like watching TV for a day and just chilling and just talking to my sister who I was quarantining with. Um, and those days are fine. And know that doing having a break day doesn't just make you lazy or you know undisciplined. In fact, I even think they are necessary sometimes to prevent burnout. Another thing that really helped me while I was studying for the LSAT, especially during the last couple months when I was feeling a little bit sluggish and like not as motivated, was to find a study buddy. So I went on Reddit and I think I wrote some posts on like the LSAT forum. I ended up talking to a few people who are studying for the LSAT who are at similar, who've been studying for around the same time as me and who had similar target scores as me. And other people I talked to, one of the one of the one of the guys ended up being really compatible with me. We were studying for around the same time, same target scores. So we started having a study schedule together. We would take the practice test on our own, we would do some blind reviewing on our own, and then afterwards when there are difficult questions, we would take it to each other, we would make a call every other day or every couple days, I think, where we just like try to explain these questions to each other and through explaining it, it forces you to like really hone down on your logic. And also I think it serves as like an accountability partner. I think before that I was like having trouble even taking one practice test every week because it's just 
it's hard. It's I know how hard it is to <laughs> to like force yourself to sit there, and I think it's like. I avoid it instinctively because I'm scared of my results. I'm scared that it's not what I want it to be, so I procrastinate it and I push it off. But when I have accountability partner and we're like, okay, we're gonna review this task on this day, it forces me that I have to take this practice the day before. I found it really helpful to have accountability partner, and if it works for you, you should give it a try. Another thing that I think is helpful during study process that is staying physically and mentally healthy. So that could mean eating, eating food that are healthier um, at night. Literally, I searched this up. What is good for your brain? <laughs> what is like food that's like nutritious for your brain? And apparently, fatty fish, walnuts, green leafy veggies, berries, and coffee is good for your brain health. <laughs> so that was helpful. And sleep well, stay hydrated. And for me, I also work out every day as my form of to de-stress. For you, it could be something different. You could meditate, you could draw, um, but I think having some routine to make sure that you you feel happy and feel good is, is helpful to your performance on the outside as well. Okay, so now some final tips on what to do on your actual exam day. So what I found helpful was that I scheduled my, so I did my test online. So I scheduled my test around the same time that I do my practice test. So I've been doing it very consistently. So my brain knows that when it hits 10 a.m., it's time to focus, it's time to go into my mode. So that was one thing. And then also sleep a lot. Don't drink too much water just before the test and eat a nutritious breakfast and have fun, be excited. I think that helps me because as I said, I if you channel your kind of like fear and anxiety into just excitement, be like, I study for this, I train so hard for this and this is my time to like perform and this is like, this is it. I think like having like a positive attitude is helpful. So. That is all my tips. Let me know if you try any of the things I mentioned and if it works for you. Holy shit, I just got my score back. Literally, I'm like <laughs> crying to my mom. And I feel so relieved. I had like three dreams last night of different scenarios, getting different scores on the LSAT. So this, oh my God, I'm happy. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.